confident are you in that? I know a lot of it has to do with licensing fees, but some of it is the revenue as well. Keno did yes. not work out as well as, as one would have, as you would have hoped, correct? Yes. Um, well, uh, obviously this is going to be explored, I'm sure, by the, by the committee and the Senate this afternoon. Uh, and we are happy to provide the answer uh, to the questions you've raised. But uh, I will just say to you here that we have consulted with other states that have instituted similar uh, BLT uh, uh, initiatives at their racetracks. Um, we have uh, drawn upon the findings of the Ohio Racing Commission we have consulted, obviously, with our own tax department. And we believe what we have set forth as the expected revenue is uh, a reasonable estimate. Uh, in fact, I would say that if you look at the range that we may have chosen, that we have uh, uh, chosen to be closer to the more conservative uh, end of that range. And uh, so we think that we have uh, good support for our revenue estimates and uh, reasonable, uh, reasonable expectations that uh, if the plan were to be passed as I have put it forth, uh, that it would give us the $933 million that we need to close our budget gap. Governor, so having covered some of those protests last week, I heard several people saying that disagreeing with you that it would, in fact, uh, have the lowest impact or minimize the impact on mentally ill and those in recovery. And they say that it may actually cost lives. What do you, how do you respond to those people who have that legitimate concern in their minds? Well, I've always said that the people have a right to petition their government. And uh, my wife has said to me, Ted, if you weren't governor, you probably would be out there in the yard with a, with a protest sign. And uh, so I understand the advocates who feel deeply um, uh, expressing themselves. Um, but I do believe that when this final budget is approved, and it will happen eventually, that uh, many of their fears will, will not be realized uh, and uh, that we will continue to provide those essential services to the most vulnerable among us. You drew comparisons to Pennsylvania. Um, that's a state that has had slot machines now for a couple of years, and yet, they're, as you pointed out, they're in pretty much the same boat as Ohio. Can we read into that, that, that maybe slot machines aren't the answer here? Well, Pennsylvania ha has a very low personal income tax rate, and part of their solution, as, uh, as Governor Rendell shared with me, is that part of their solution uh, at this point in time is to increase their their income tax rate. So um, every state has you know, a different mix of um, revenue sources. And um, it is true that they have slot machines currently, but their uh, uh, personal uh, income tax rate is, is, is lower than ours. Governor, how long can we continue to pass temporary budgets before it becomes problematic for your budget office, et cetera? Well, I think it's I think it's problematic even even for current temporary budget in that some uh, you know significant parts of our state's government will be receiving uh, lower levels of funding. So I don't want to minimize the negative effects of of, of a current uh, uh, temporary budget uh, or continuing resolution. However, uh, I continue to believe and hope, uh, and I think have realistic expectations that working together in good faith, we will come to an agreement and a second uh, budget extension will not be necessary. I have shared with, uh, with uh, Speaker Houston and Senator Harris that uh, this budget must be brought to a conclusion uh, and that we must not leave this city for um, uh, other pursuits until we have done the necessary work to give the state of Ohio a budget. And uh, I think given those uh, constraints, there is significant motivation to get this accomplished. 